So the, the next guy's gonna come up. Um, if you were here last week Tuesday, how many of you guys were here last week Tuesday? Uh, for those of that wasn't here, by the tape. I I just joking, but I don't think they have a tape. I think they went live and there were some broadcast issues. But we were so blessed by people speaking into our life. And this whole month we have amazing people. One of the amazing people that wasn't on schedule to come, but God scheduled him, was well, is Chuck Lawyer and his wife Justine. And I'm gonna ask hey. Chuck, aka hey, Lion Man, Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Man to come up. Um, last week I, I, I ministered to him and I said, you are Iron Man. And um, I was like, Lord, I know he's Iron Man because you have given him an iron, strong titanium leg. But I don't want to say that. And then I released it after like God nudging me for like a minute. And then he took me out to breakfast and revealed how important that word of Iron Man was. Wow. And so I'm going to hand it over to him. He's going to share his testimony for a few minutes. And I'm going to give it over to Patrick to share about himself. Patrick wishes to share about himself and what God's doing in his life. All right. Yeah. Give it up to Uncle Chuck. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for receiving us. Yeah. We've been here um, two weeks, a little over two weeks. And uh, we're scheduled to fly back to California tomorrow. And we're a little bit sad about that because we have fell, fallen in love with the people here in this church. Wow. And the people here in this island. And we have been so blessed. So blessed. Wow. So just thank you. Just wanna thank you. Um, yeah. Um, I can't really give you my whole testimony and the amount of time that I got. But what I want to say is I carry the Father's heart. And I've been through much affliction in my life. And this is only one of the many wounds that I carry. But I have the Father God who has healed me, who has sozoed me, which actually means he has saved, healed, delivered, set free. And it goes on beyond that. But... Uh, my journey has been about a journey of discovering God and His love for me and His love for His world, His people, both saved and non-saved. And um, the journey has been so intense at times that I just weep sometimes, knowing His heart. But um, quickly, if I can just give you a background. I grew up in a um, small town in California um, and I went to a Catholic school. Pastor? I mean, um, Patrick? Father Patrick? <laughs> and um, I guess it was, um, I was six or seven years old when we were, we, we went to Mass every morning before school. And I was having such a hard time adjusting because I was just a little young rambunctious little guy, you know? And uh, always getting in trouble and always getting my hands swatted by the nuns. Mm -hmm. And so one day I look up and um, on the cross is Jesus. And I had this moment, this encounter with the Lord God right at that time. And I felt his love. And I needed that deposit in my life for what was gonna come later. But I looked up and I said, Jesus, I know that you're a good, good God, and you're not mean like these nuns. Yeah. <laughs> so I had that assurance, though, of his love. And so, um, you know, I just went on, grew up, got, you know, just regular old get in trouble kind of teenager, and, you know, uh, experimented with drugs and alcohol and that sort of thing, which got me in a little pickle. So I had to join the army in order to stay out of jail at 17. Well, I thought at 17, they won't send me to Vietnam because that was the era. And uh, well, by the time I went to basic training, advanced individual training, I was 18. They cut my order. Before I turned 18, they cut my orders to go to war. And I didn't belong there. And I nobody belongs in a war. But what I witnessed there was devastating. You know? And uh, <clears throat> but God was with me. And I, uh, I got introduced to more drugs than I did in high school just to self-medicate, to exist, to be able to sleep because it was, it was trauma all around us all the time. Uh, fear, fear of being blown up in the middle of the night, you know, fear of being shot out of the helicopter. I was a crew chief. Um, <clears throat> so fear followed me 
And had I known the Word of God at that time, maybe I wouldn't have been as fearful. But it's when you walk through it, it's different. So, long story short, I come back. I get stationed in Colorado. I get busted with 76 pounds of marijuana. Not mine, but uh, they didn't believe me. <laughs> so I'm facing 30 to 60 years in prison. Oh, man. Ended up only doing indefinite to four, but I got out by the grace of God in four and a half months, which is wow. not I was reading the Bible in the, in, the, in the prison for the first time in my life. And God so blessed that, honored it. But when I got out, I didn't know how to walk that out. I didn't have fellowship. I didn't have friends. I was in another, you know, Colorado Springs was not my home state. And so I ended up falling back into the old ways. And um, so <clears throat> I got married, got divorced. It was very painful. It was more trauma. To me, the divorce was as traumatic as anything else. And so we're going to escape, okay? We're going to go to Mexico, my friends and I, three friends, and um, we're just partying again, you know, because that's what we did back then. And um, we're on this train. I oh, know we were on a bus. Have you ever seen the movies where they got the chickens and the roosters and everything coming out of the, you know, in the back? And they're, they're, it's just one of those, and we're going from one village to the next. And there was a gentleman that had a big growth on his nose. And, and it was almost the size of a golf ball. And one of my friends was making fun of him, the man. And I got angry. There, it was a righteous indignation that rose up in me. And I said, you know what? I, don't, I think God sometimes put people on earth for us to test our hearts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw that a little bit. Ticked at him and I went to the back of the bus. And I sat there and I said, God, I am so grateful of what I have. Of who I am. And... Um, you know, if I ever had something like that, or if I lost an eye or an arm or a leg, I would still love you. And the very next day, I had an encounter with the locomotive train. And uh, we were passengers on the train. And we were going from Mexico City to the Yucatan. And uh, I don't know what happened, but <clears throat> there was a gal on there that got sick from drinking mixed drinks and... Um, and and, um, and and taking Dramamine. So the mixture really wasn't good. So at one of the stops, we took her off. One friend of mine, we were going to walk her around because every time we stopped, it was like 20, 30 minutes. <clears throat> so anyway, this one time, uh, she, she got off the train and she just wanted to sit down. She didn't want to walk around. She just was pretty sick, actually. So then the train starts to leave. And... Um, We try to lift her up. We try to get her on the train, but she just fall down. We got her up again. So I had my right arm around her waist. My, my friend had his left arm. We were going to lift her up on one on the rails and uh, try to get her up to safety. <clears throat> well, by the time we actually got her up, the train was moving pretty good. And you know, my resistance to a locomotive is you know none. Yeah. yeah. So when I grabbed that rail, that train just jerked me off my feet. <clears throat> my legs flung and swung, my grip gave out, and all in one motion, it was a motion that my legs flew underneath the, the train. And the train ran over me, and it cut my leg off right there. Cut my heel off, broke my femur, and I took about, <clears throat> I guess, about 34 stitches on the back end, just from, you know, scraping, being scraped. And I, I, I rolled alongside the train, and then I rolled away from the train down an embankment. It was pretty steep. And it seemed like I was rolling for a long time, but I just remember hearing that iron on iron, iron man. No, no, I wasn't iron man then, but. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I came to a stop and I, and I, and, and forgive me for my language, but I said this, damn, I could have been really hurt. <laughs> and I had no idea what had happened. No idea, no clue. I thought it was okay. My body must have went into shock immediately. My leg was severed. I, I tried to get up, and that's when I knew I was hurt. And my, I looked down, and my, my jeans legs were just skin tight. I looked, and I couldn't see my foot, and my pants were shredded with blood everywhere. And I knew I was seriously hurt. <clears throat> and I had no idea how bad. And I thought maybe my foot was turned around. And I broke my foot and my leg. 
And um, so <clears throat> when I my friend's chasing the train, trying to get it to stop, I hear him saying, stop, stop, and he's down there. Then I'm, by, by the time I'm processing all this, I'm starting to figure out that maybe I lost my, my leg. But it, but it just didn't seem real. It, you know, I couldn't comprehend that thought. And um, I, when I did, uh, my friend got down there and, and, I, and I said, Tim, is my, is my leg gone? And he said, I think so. And um, I still couldn't comprehend the reality of me at 24 years old, being run over by a train, losing my leg, having nothing left to live for, because that's how it felt at that moment, that I had nothing, my, my life was over. And I felt, I was in that moment where I felt like I had the power to go home with the Lord, <clears throat> um, or to, to live, to live, to die. And I asked that, I asked myself that question, do I want to just give it up now? And the will to live rose up from, from deep within me. And right in that same moment, my friends, I heard God speak to me. That same love, that tenderness of God. The one who is gentle and kind and peaceable. And he said these words to me, my son, my son. He said, you will not die from this accident. But you will live a long and fruitful life. And you will die of old age serving me. But can I tell you how what, what the peace of God feels like in the middle of your worst nightmare ever? I just said, okay, God. And I've never had that experience. But those words were so vivid, so clear, so loving. His presence was there with me. As I said, I'd love you anyway, God. And I could just see that scene in heaven <clears throat> when Satan goes up to, um, to God and says, oh, and God says, oh, have you seen my servant Job? And he goes, oh, yeah, he's only good because you give him everything, right? Well, I wasn't serving God in that capacity at all. Don't get me wrong. But I could just see, like, you have permission. You know, I, I kind of challenged myself in that whole thing. I made bad choices. I was 24 years old, and um, but I'm just saying that God was with me, and I knew that at that moment everything was going to be okay. I didn't know how, and I didn't know how things were going to work out. I ended up eight and a half months in the hospital, you know, surgery after surgery. I had three amputations. You know, the doctor in Mexico uh, amputated it the second time to get all the rocks and debris out of it, and then when I got back to the states, they said. You need to have that shape for a prosthesis. And I had so much infection by the time I got back to the States. They, I was on the borderline of gangrene. And they said, you might have to lose your leg up above your knee, your right leg. And I lost my complete heel on the left foot. And they were going to take that leg off you know, below uh, my knee on that side. So, But anyway, the grace of God was at work. And they got all the infection out. <clears throat> so I had many, many... Uh, surgeries. Eight and a half months later, I was learning how to walk, how to prosthesis, and um, so that's how that is. But the significance of that word that, that Felix gave me was that uh, before all that happened, um, I used to. Has, have ever, has anybody in here heard uh, that song, Iron Man, or is it called uh, the Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I hate to say that word in church, Black Sabbath, yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the name of the group that did uh, Iron Man. And I used to, when we were partying and, and the song would come in, come on, and the guys were all in the room, I'd walk in and I would be going, <laughs> I am Iron Man. <laughs> and so that was my character prior to my accident. But, um, you know, Iron Man... I, I, I looked this up last night or this morning, so I wanted I wanted to share this. Uh, uh, Iron Man <clears throat> wounded, captured, and forced to build a weapon by his enemies. Oh, by his enemies, um, billionaire industrialist Tony Stark instead created an advanced suit of armor to save his life and um, and escape captivity. And I just think how. <clears throat> 
uh, through all the trials I've been through, um, you know, this, this whole Iron Man thing now has new relevance, new, new significance, you know. Um, there's a scripture here. I just wanted to, I wanted to read this. Um, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. So my life story brings good news to the afflicted when they can see what God has done in my life. Uh, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion and give them garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the mantle of praise instead of the spirit of faith. And he says, so they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. The Lord God might be glorified. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And so <clears throat> that's just the, that's just this part. Uh, if I had more time, if we had more time, I, I would uh, share about the addiction that came later in life, the trials that hit me. Uh, Ten years I had, a, I had uh, a tumor in the base of my spine. I ended up having cancer, uh, and I have overcome all this stuff by the grace of God. I have had um, post-traumatic stress from the war. That's what the therapist told me. But I learned how to be a good therapist from the therapist. You know? <laughs> so I used all that, you know, to turn around for good. So um, one more thing I just want to share, you know, about... So my journey has been about helping people transform their thinking. To start to see them in the love of God. To see them how God sees them. And sometimes because of our lives, the things that we go through, the, the trials, uh, the trauma of, of life even, you know, the hardships of life. They, they, they form our thinking and, and, and how we act and how we respond. But the Bible says keep yourself in the love of God. You know, and when you do that, then you're going to be operating out of the fruits of the Spirit, which is, you know, goodness, you know, kindness, gentleness. Come on, give me some more. Self-control, <laughs> peace, yes. So when we can start to uh, respond to life situations, when we've got that fruit in us, then we become overcomers, you know. And so I now am, I, I actually had a real good life after I got saved, after God touched my life, but then I had this other thing. So my wife Justine, stand up, Justine, please. She has supported me. She's been with me for over 40 years. We've been married 39, and we've been together about 42. And we've got three grown children, four grandkids, and she's been by my side through it all. You've been by my side? Aww. Aww. <laughs> And Justine, Justine, you're my queen. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, God used all of that as well to turn it around. My my profession um, after this whole train thing was I went back to school. I started to, to uh, I went to school to become an architect. And eventually I, I worked my way and got my architect's license. I got a general contractor's license. I did design build. I designed people's houses and then build them. And then we moved to Reading. We got out of fellowship. We had a church breakup. And um, and we just couldn't find a fit too, too well. We, we went to uh, Bethel for a while. But it wasn't the same. And so uh, after these surgeries, I ended up getting addicted to uh, pain pills. And uh, it, was, it was a scary thing. And I saw myself on the edge of... Um, it, I, it, it turned into a real bad addiction. But uh, God delivered me. I ended up going to rehab. And um, now he's taken that. And when I saw the devastation of what drugs and alcohol were doing to other people, he said, you know, this is what I want you to do. I want to finish your life. He, he told me I'd finish my life serving him. And so now I, I run uh, recovery groups. Um, I work at our church and I'm, I'm working in a transformation center and I'm writing programs on how to help people get transformed by the renewing of the mind and the heart. You know, I carry a, 
a message of love from the Father. Mm. And, um, you know, with that, you know, we can overcome anything. Amen. So that's how I became Iron Man. Yeah. Thank you.